the acetoacetic ester synthesis is very similar to the malonic ester synthesis. This procedure also utilizes the reactivity of the alpha carbon, but in the preparation of mono or disubstituted acetone derivatives. The reaction is named for the substrate, which is an ester of acetoacetic acid. The preparation of mono-substituted acetone derivatives involves three steps. Formation of the enolate, alkylation, and hydrolysis and decarboxylation. The net result is the installation of a single substituent on an alpha carbon of acetone. Disubstituted acetone derivatives are prepared in an analogous fashion but a second iteration of alpha alkylation occurs prior to hydrolysis and decarboxylation. And the overall result is the installation of two substituents on an alpha carbon of acetone. The preparation of a mono-substituted acetone derivative begins with enolate formation. A base removes one of the two most acidic protons in the molecule. These would be the protons on the position that is alpha to both carbonyls. The electrons from the broken carbon-hydrogen sigma bond can be delocalized into both the ketone and the ester carbonyls, providing a great deal of stabilization for the enolate. The enolate is then alkylated when it attacks an alkyl halide or a comparable electrophile and displaces the good leaving group. Since this is an SN2 reaction, the alkyl halide must be unhindered. Upon heating with aqueous acid, the ester is hydrolyzed to a beta-keto acid. The full mechanism for this step of the reaction can be found in the video on the nucleophilic acyl substitution of esters. Drawing the beta-keto ester in a different conformation makes it more apparent that it can engage in intramolecular hydrogen bonding. As the hydrogen bond grows stronger, the ketone pi bonding electrons can be used to remove the labile carboxylic acid proton. As a result, a new carbon oxygen pi bond is formed, while a carbon carbon sigma bond is cleaved. This leads to the loss of the carboxylic acid as carbon dioxide and provides the product as its enol tautomer. Tautomerization then occurs spontaneously through protonation at the alpha position and loss of the hydroxyl proton. This provides the mono-substituted acetone derivative in its keto form. The synthesis of di-substituted acetone derivatives is quite similar. This process also begins with enolate formation. The first alpha alkylation is completed when an alkyl halide is added in step two of the reaction. Since the doubly activated alpha carbon still bears one proton, it is possible to deprotonate a second time in order to form a new enolate. And a second alpha alkylation occurs when an alkyl halide is added to this enolate in step four of the reaction. At this point, no highly acidic protons remain on the carbon between the ester and the ketone. Therefore, no further alkylation is possible at this center. Hydrolysis and decarboxylation can be initiated by heating an aqueous acid. The hydrolysis occurs first, giving the beta-keto acid. And this beta-keto acid then decarboxylates to yield the product 
as its enol tautomer. Finally, spontaneous tautomerization affords the di-substituted acetone derivative as the favored keto tautomer. Let's take a look at some specific examples. In the following instance, ethyl acetoacetate is used in the preparation of 4-phenyl-2-butanone, a monosubstituted acetone derivative. The synthesis begins with enolate formation. Ethyl acetoacetate is fairly acidic at the position between the ketone and the ester. In fact, it has a pKa of about 11. Consequently, mild bases can be used to deprotonate this substrate. Notice how the base chosen, ethoxide, has an alkyl group that matches the alkyl group of the ester. This prevents transesterification from becoming a complicating factor. Next, addition of an alkyl halide, in this case benzyl bromide, completes the alpha alkylation. Acidic hydrolysis then converts the ethyl ester to the corresponding carboxylic acid. And since this particular carboxylic acid possesses a carbonyl in the beta position, it is susceptible to decarboxylation when heated. This cleaves one carbon from the substrate in the form of carbon dioxide. The product is also produced in this step in its enol form. Tautomerization rapidly converts the product from its enol form to the favored keto form. It's useful to pause to consider the overall strategy behind the acetoacetic ester synthesis. This approach to the preparation of the target compound allowed for the use of a mild base because ethyl acetoacetate possesses two carbonyls that enhance the acidity of its alpha carbon. The direct alkylation of acetone would have been much more difficult. One reason is that a stronger base is needed to fully deprotonate its less acidic alpha position. A second problem is that acetone tends to polymerize in base. In the next example, a di-substituted acetone derivative is prepared through two rounds of alpha alkylation followed by hydrolysis and decarboxylation. Enolate formation occurs when ethoxide is used to deprotonate the alpha carbon of ethyl acetoacetate. The first alpha alkylation concludes with the addition of an alkyl halide bearing one of the two alkyl groups that we wish to install at the alpha position. The order of the two alkylations does not matter. We could install either the benzyl or the methyl group first. Benzyl bromide has been used here. With one acidic proton remaining at the position between the two carbonyls, we can deprotonate yet again through treatment with ethoxide in step three of the reaction. The newly formed enolate then attacks methyl bromide in the fourth step, and this installs the second and last alkyl group that is needed at the alpha position. At this point, hydrolysis and decarboxylation will remove the ester from the substrate to afford the desired product. Hydrolysis occurs first and converts the ethyl ester to the carboxylic acid. And this beta keto acid decarboxylates when heated. The enol tautomer of the product is obtained first. Tautomerization then occurs rapidly and spontaneously, giving the target compound. In summary, 
the acetoacetic ester synthesis allows us to produce mono or disubstituted acetone derivatives more conveniently than we could through the direct alpha alkylation of acetone itself. The ester in the substrate serves as a removable activating group that enhances the acidity of the alpha protons, enabling deprotonation under mild conditions. When it is no longer needed, the ester is cleaved off through hydrolysis and decarboxylation. The reaction has a few stages that are directly comparable to those of the malonic ester synthesis. It begins with enolate formation and alkylation. These are the two steps of alpha alkylation. And if a disubstituted product is desired, these two steps can simply be repeated. After alpha alkylation is complete, heating with aqueous acid results in hydrolysis of the ester and decarboxylation to afford the final product. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.